Hey, badasses. You are listening to the Badass Podcast, where it is my intention to share raw and real advice on how you can be bolder and braver in all that you do. I am your host, Sasha Davis. Today, I want to share with you a few reasons why I think confidence is the key to success in both your personal and your professional life. I want to share six ways confidence has personally changed my life and how that can benefit you. All right, let's dive on in. So number one, when you are confident, you ask for what you want. This was a huge struggle for me. I thought that everybody around me should just know what I want. I shouldn't even have to ask for it. With my husband, with my family, with my boss, um, with my colleagues, I just thought that everybody should know. I shouldn't have to say anything. And then when I did say something, I would always second guess myself. I would say things in my head like, what if they think that's stupid? Or what if they don't like me? Or what if they don't agree with me? And the truth is, sometimes they don't. And that's okay. And the more you practice speaking your mind and asking for what you want, and not just assuming that everybody knows what you want, because if you've ever heard, it's, it's funny, the, what comes to mind is I had a shop teacher when I was, when I was in high school. And yes, I was that girl that took shop. Judge me. Don't care. And he would always say, don't assume a measurement's correct. You would always have to check and recheck and triple check. He says, when you make an assumption, when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. So now I never assume that somebody knows what I want from them what, what I need from them. I don't ever assume I have to make sure that I ask for it. And even when you do assume a lot of times they don't get it right because they have no idea what you want. So in your personal life, if you want your husband to help out around the house, you need to ask for help around the house. If you want somebody to help you watching your children, you need help. You need to ask for that. If you want some alone time, if you want some self-care time, you need to ask for what you want. And the same thing in your professional life. How will your boss or your colleagues or anybody know that you need help unless you ask for it? How will they know that you want a day off unless you ask for it? And most importantly, how will they know you need a raise more money in your life if you don't ask for it. Most people don't just like hand out money willy-nilly. I know I don't. I mean, sometimes I do, but most of the time I don't. Somebody has to tell me that they want it or they need it. Okay. Number two, when you are confident, you know your worth. You know your worth. And this was super important for me, especially starting out as a new business owner. I, (laughs) I love doing stuff for free. I really do, but I'm worth more than free. And there are so many people out there that will just take advantage of free. And I have invested a lot of time, effort, money, blood, sweat, and tears into being the person I am today through experiences, through education, through just life in general. Like, you know, sometimes you get dealt some shitty cards and you have a choice. You either take the high road or you take the low road. And I didn't always take the high road, but I took the high road more often than the other road, which has led me on the path to where I am today. But back to the worth. It was all self-love. It was all the reflection on the inside until I started to value myself for who I am and what I put out into the world with my family, with my work. I really struggled with my worth. I would say awful things to myself. I wouldn't ask for what I needed. I wouldn't ask for money, even though 
I probably should have been charging a hell of a long time ago. (laughs) But I also just didn't value myself in the sense of like my self care. Like I would always get like the cheapy versions of everything. I didn't think that I was worth a $50 pedicure. You know, I used to do just and and this is just fluffy stuff and I'm just putting prices out there, but you know, when you buy the equate version of everything, you treat yourself like the equate version. When you start to treat yourself like a VIP and value your worth, you feel better and you're more confident. And that was a really big struggle for me. I, I really struggled with that. And sometimes I still do. And I have made a vow that if, and when, or when I can choose the VIP version, I will save or I will make it happen. And I will VIP myself all the time because I know deep down that I am worth it. I am worth all the VIP, all the diamond, all the whatever it is. I am worth it. I am worth the money. I am worth the time. I am worth the energy. And I like to protect that. And I like to project that onto other people. I like to fill myself up with so much love that I'm just like overflowing to everybody else. And this was a hard skill to learn. So the first thing that I started to do is when somebody would compliment me, I would just say simply thank you thank you. Not, oh, these old clothes or, oh, it was only $5 or, oh, I'm not that pretty or I'm not that nice or I'm not blah, blah, blah. Start by saying thank you. Start by saying you love yourself. Every day, find three things that you are, that you are worthy of, that you love yourself for. Okay. Work on the self-love because that's where the worth comes in. And that was a hard thing for me to figure out. But you can do it. Baby steps. Number three, when you are confident, you value your time. You value your time. I would say yes to every single opportunity, which I will get to here in a minute. Um, <laughs> but I do. I value my time. I value my time with my family. I value my time with myself. I value my time with those that I love or those that I care about or those that I serve. And the old me would just scatter my time all over, spread myself so thin that I was literally just given half ass to everybody, less than half ass to everybody. And I didn't value any of it. I didn't give 100% effort on anything. So start to value your time. And and one way that I do this is I set, like it, it goes back to time management and I will block out time in my day where I focus on one thing. So if I'm going to focus on my family, like I am focusing on my family. I value that time with my family. I put away all other distractions. If I'm working on my business, I try to put away all other distractions and I value the time in my business. And I focus 100% on that with my self-care. I am not multitasking in my self-care. I value that time with myself. That time is sacred and I'm focused. I'm laser focused on that time, that energy, that moment. And I'm giving myself 100% of me. Multitasking is bullshit. You can never give more than 100% of your focus on any given task. And I don't care what anybody says. Multitasking is bullshit. Focus on one thing at a time. Focus your time, your energy, 100% of it as often as you can on one skill and start small. Maybe what you do is for five minutes every morning, you focus a five minute time on meditation or you focus a five minute window of time on journaling or you focus 10 minutes with your family undistract, like no phones, no electronics, no nothing and start to build that time more to the point where you're like spending two hours with your family and you really truly value that time with your family And it's high quality time, okay? Not just quantity. You're not just spending the whole day with them doing stupid shit where you're on your phone all day. You're actually spending quality time together. Same thing in your your career, in your job. Focus your time. Focus your energy. Don't spread yourself thin. Start small. Work your way up. You can do it. Next. What's this? Number four. When you're confident... You set boundaries. 
I call these non-negotiables. I did not come up with this. My coach taught it. One of my mentors taught it to me and I'm teaching it to you. Set boundaries. What are your non-negotiables? What will you do? What will you not do? And be firm with those. If you are spending Friday nights with your family, that is a boundary. You are not going to make other plans in that time. Or maybe your boundaries are, I'm not going to drink wine. And that's just a boundary, you know, and you may or may not be a drinker. No judgment. I do like my Cabernet, but I don't, I I don't know. I find the more that I love myself and the more I dive into myself and the self care and, and just being authentic with who I am, the more vulnerable I am, the more I feel that I don't even need to drink. And before guys, I'm not kidding you. I could put back a bottle of tequila and be a Sasha shit show like it's nobody's business. I whew, I was the queen of the hot mess, let me tell ya. I have stories. You stick with me, you'll hear lots of stories. <laughs> but set boundaries. Set boundaries at your job. What are you willing to do? What are or what are you willing the what are you not willing to do? I know sometimes when you're a yes person, people tend to take advantage of that you know, and not to say that like, Oh, is it in my job description? Because I hate people like that. But when you're upfront and like, I am not going to travel for work, that's a boundary. You know, I've traveled for work, but I'm just saying maybe that's you. Or maybe your boundary is I'm not working overnights. I am not working third shift. Or maybe your boundaries with your family where you're like, I am not doing this or I am doing this. Like what are your non-negotiables? My non-negotiables are every day I wake up, I do my morning routine to the best of my ability. That is a non-negotiable. Like I am doing it. Don't interrupt me until like 7 a.m. Unless there's a freaking earthquake or the roof is coming off. There's no earthquakes, but the wind can be pretty wicked around here. Like do not bother me. That is a boundary and I am pretty firm on it. So start small. What boundaries are you setting? What non-negotiables are you setting in your life, in your personal life, in your professional life? Okay. Think about it. It doesn't have to be big right away. Maybe you just set boundaries with yourself first, which is actually harder to do. So maybe don't do that. Set boundaries (laughs) with other people first because keeping promises to yourself, which I'll get to on another podcast is actually harder than keeping promises to other people. So set boundaries with others, set boundaries with your children, set boundaries with your husband, set boundaries with your work and be clear about your boundaries. Make sure you communicate, over communicate what those boundaries are. Tell people, hold yourself accountable. You can do it. Next, what are we at? Number five. I have one more after this. So stay, stay with me. When you are confident, you say no more often than you say yes. This was so effing hard for me. You guys, I still struggle. I have shiny object syndrome, like nobody's business. If there's somebody's like, Hey, here's an opportunity. I'm like that. Have you ever seen that family guy episode where the guy is like, I don't even remember his name, (laughs) but he's like, Oh, piece of candy. Oh, piece of candy. Oh, piece of candy. That's me. Or if you've ever seen the movie Up, apparently I'm a really big fan of cartoons, where the dog's like, squirrel, that's me. I really have to focus because I want to say yes to everything. But actually, when you say no to some opportunities or some obligations, events, family, whatever it is, you are saying yes to yourself and you are saying yes to your future goals, your future lifestyle, your future income, your future mental health, your future family goals, whatever it is. So when I say no to the things that I don't really want to do, I say yes to the things that I really want to do more often. It creates space to say yes to the things that really do serve me and my family and my business. So start with the little no's. I have a client of mine who is very similar to me in this aspect, and she says yes to almost everything. And so what we started with, and this is just an example for you, is say you have a ton of family. Well, 
chances are you have tons of aunts and uncles and tons of cousins, tons of siblings, things like that. Everybody and their mom is in sports. It's like a, a thing, like who can be the busiest lifestyle in the world? Like who can have the fullest life? And I really don't even like the word busy anymore. I like I like to be doing things that make me happy, but I don't like the word busy because when I, when I think of busy, I think of like negative. And so I don't like that word, but rabbit hole. See? Squirrel. So you have all this family and they're like, hey, so-and-so, Susie McSuserton, come to every single event every night of the week and don't ever have room to breathe, shit, or shower. And she always is like, yes, yes, I'll come to everything. Yes, I'll come to everything to the point where like you get so anxious, you get so angry, and you have no time for you that you're just like, Ugh! and you spread yourself thin and you, it's like this, it's, it's like an abusive relationship triangle right? <laughs> or a circle or whatever the hell they call it. So be clear about the things that you can make and the things that you can't make. So it goes back to setting the boundaries, but you also have to learn to say no. So what we had worked on was picking which events you would go to. So say Monday night, you're going to go to an event. Tuesday night, you're going to be home. You communicate to those people. No, I cannot attend XYZ event because I, you actually don't even have to give an explanation. Who gives a shit? Just tell them no. No, I can't. I have made plans with myself, whatever. And then maybe Wednesday night you go to this event and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you say no (laughs) or however it looks like for you. But practice saying no more often. Well, do you have a birthday party every Saturday? Do you have to go to every single birthday party? Maybe you say no to one out of every three. Or maybe your friends go out every Friday night and you're like, ugh, I really don't want to go out anymore. Like maybe you suggest something else or you just say, no, thank you. Or maybe you're out at dinner and everybody's getting sweets and you're on a diet and you're like, ugh, (laughs) I really don't want to eat that, but everybody else is doing it. Maybe you just say, no, thank you, because you got goals and you don't want those goals to be wasted over a five second quick decision and being a sheep and following what everybody else is doing. Practice saying no. I promise it gets easier. The first few times you say it, you're probably going to be like, oh my God, this is so hard. But, um after you do it for a while, it's almost like you get giddy when you say no. Somebody's like, Sasha, do you want, I'm like, no, nope, I don't want to do that. (laughs) It's like, I almost can't say no fast enough and not in like a dickhead way. Like there's just certain things that I just don't want to do anymore. And when I say no to those things, it just creates space for the things that I do want to do, which is more fun stuff to me, more active, more family time, more personal development, more me (laughs) like just more love for myself and my family and my business and my clients and my animals and my nature and all the good stuff in my life so say no more often okay last but not least you guys ready for this dun 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 when you are confident you know what makes you happy sounds so simple but really, I, one of the reasons why, well, there's, this kind of goes both ways. There's two reasons why I'm like confident and why this one rings a bell for me. Um, for a while there, I had no idea what made me happy. And so I just kind of copied everybody and just said yes to everything. And then I was like burnt out cause I was like doing all the things. And yes, sometimes the experience was, were fun. And that's kind of why I have done so much shit in my life. Um, Stupid shit too, not just like fun stuff. Like I've done a lot of really, 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 really poor choices because um, it made other people happy (laughs) and I was not focused on my own happiness. And on the outside, I may have looked confident, um, but I think part of it is because I just have like resting bitch face. And so people just are like, oh... She looks like a bitch, so she must be confident. But really, like, on the inside, I was always kind of, like, scared and afraid to be the real me. So I would always put on, like, this bitchy front. Um, And I drank a lot. I partied a lot. I spoke my mind a lot. But I was also kind of an asshole. Like, I... 
was just an asshole, guys. That's a story for another time. I don't want to go down another rabbit hole. But when I focused on what truly made me happy, and I really started to like dive deep into like what makes me happy, and some of the words that come up were like family, community, connection, love, adventure. You know, I'm an adrenaline junkie at heart and I love trying new things in like a healthy way. Like not that I'm going to do like ski body shots or ski shots, which I have done or like chug six beers and then ski down a mountain, which I've done or like drink a half a bottle of rum and go do the demo derby, which I've done. And don't get me wrong. Like those things were fun, but like they weren't healthy to like go get shit face and then do scary things. Like I just enjoyed like the adrenaline. I love the sense of like being alive. And that's one of my core desired feelings is like alive, abundance, energized. Oh, I love those words. I love love. <laughs> but when I really started to focus in on me, quiet my mind, find out what really makes me happy and serving people makes me happy. Like Giving back to others makes me happy. Spending time with my family makes me happy. I get so giddy just hanging out with my family. You know, sometimes I just look over at my husband and I just like, I just want to burst with like tears of joy because I'm like, how did I get so freaking lucky? How? How did I get so lucky? You know, like, and then I look at my daughter and I want to just. Like, I just want to walk around, like, crying tears of joy all the time, you know? But that's what makes me happy. My family makes me happy. And then my clients in the mastery program, oh, they make me so happy. And then the other women that I serve with, like, the webinars and the free Facebook group and all these things and these people, they reach out to me and they say, Sasha, I don't know how you do it. Like, you're out there being vulnerable and this and that. And I'm like, oof gosh, what are they going to say? You know, sometimes I always think I'm going to get like super hate mail, but then they're like, I, you are, you are inspiring me. You have made me want to start my own business. You have made me want to have a better relationship with my husband, with my children, with my family. I just, I, or like some of them are even like weight loss journeys. You guys are like, they've broke out of their shell and they're just so confident in themselves and they're going out there and they're doing these live videos and they're, you know, creating incomes for their family and they're just having more time, freedom, more energy, just more alive, more happiness. And they share these with me and I about freaking burst every single time that I read an email or an Instagram message or a Facebook message or a text message or any of these things, you guys, like it makes me so damn happy that there's no words. There's no words. And I found that happiness and it makes me confident in the confidence comes from that. So now that I know what makes me happy, like I'm confident that I can continue to serve these people. I'm confident that I can continue to have these amazing relationships with my family, with my husband, with my daughter, because we're all being open and authentic and loving and caring and compassionate. And those are some words that like used to make me cringe. Oh my goodness. You talk about emotions. Blech. Blech. That's what I think about that. But now I found that true badassery, true strength, true courage, true, true confidence comes from being vulnerable, being your true authentic self. And sometimes it's hard to find that person it took me a long effing time to come back and find that person. But, you know, I still feel like for being 30 years old, I'm not doing too damn bad. So counts for something, right? Sorry, I just burped. I couldn't hold it in. So that's what I have for you guys tonight. I want you to go out there and be confident in who you are and in, in Be confident that you can be happy. You can live your dreams. You can have time freedom. You can have financial freedom. You can say no more often and say yes to yourself. You can do it. You can. I know you can. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode on why I think 
confidence is the key to success. And when you do these six things, you have a successful family life, you have a successful personal life, you have a successful business life, professional life, whatever it is, that success is really that happiness, that fullness, that abundance where you just feel so damn good that you have to share it with the world. That's what I call success, right? It's not about the numbers always, guys. It's And it's not about how it looks to others. It's about how you feel, how you feel every day when you wake up, how you feel every day when you go to sleep. Do you feel abundant? Do you feel content? Do you feel love? Gosh, that word's still kind of like has a little hint of a ooh to it, but that's okay. I'm getting used to it. Progress, not perfection. (laughs) A wise woman once told me that. All right. If you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed any of these episodes, I encourage you to screenshot this episode and share it on your social media. Share it on your Instagram. Tag me. I love to hear these things. Tag me on your Facebook. Um, I'm over on Facebook and Instagram at Sasha L. Davis. S-A-U-L. Wait, nope. I lied. S-A-U-S-H-A-L-D-A-V-I-S. Screenshot. Tag me. Tell me. Tell me how you want to be more confident in your life. Tell me how confidence has helped you be more successful in your personal, professional, business, family life. Tell me about it. Tell me all about it. I want to hear from you. Okay, so that's my that's my action step for you. If you enjoyed this episode, if you got anything from this episode, head on over to your social media, screenshot this episode, and tag me. Okay, that's all you have to do, and I will personally leave you a comment. Okay, all right, ladies. Love, love, love chatting with you. Um, Stay tuned for future episodes. I got a lot of good stuff coming your way. Lots of practical advice, lots of tips and tricks, lots of freebies in the near future, um, and some cool interviews with some pretty, pretty ambitious, inspiring, amazing, badass women. And I cannot wait to get them on this show. So stay tuned. Until next time, ladies, peace out.